Are you still using Windows 10 and getting the message that your computer is not upgradable to Windows 11? Don't worry, you're not stuck. Even if your computer doesn't meet Microsoft's stringent hardware requirements, there is a safe, legal, and reliable way to upgrade your Windows 10 computer to Windows 11, and I've helped many people do it successfully. In this video, I'm going to walk you through step-by-step -step on how to use a free tool called Rufus to upgrade from Windows 10 to Windows 11. And the best part is, is you don't lose a single thing on your computer. Let's get into it. Hello everyone, my name is Scott Merrill. I've been in IT for almost 35 years and on this channel, we do Windows tips, tricks, troubleshooting, product reviews, all kinds of stuff Windows related. So if that's something you're into, make sure you stick around. Also, one of the things that I do is make PC recommendations for people who want to buy new computers and really aren't sure what direction to go. So in the video description, there is a link. If you click that link, it will send me a form and then you can fill out that form. And then once I have that information, I can guide you to finding the right product for the right price. 100% free and I'm happy to do it. Now, some of you who watch my channel may have said, didn't you just make a video about how to do this with this other program? Yes, I did. But the reason I'm making this video today is because there have been issues with some people using that other program, which I'll link to at the end of this video. You can check that out. But one of these multiple methods is going to work for you. So I'm just going to put all the information out here and let you figure out which one works best for you. Because at the end of the day, all you really want to do is upgrade to Windows 11. So before we get started, here are the things that you are going to need. First and foremost, you're going to need your Windows 10 PC. Secondly, you're going to need a flash drive, at least eight gigabytes or larger. If you don't have one, I'll put a link in the description for you and you can click that and Amazon will ship it right to your door. You only need one per Windows operating system. You're also going to need a relatively decent internet connection. So make sure that you're doing this on a PC that's got a good connection and you're going to need anywhere from 20 to 60 minutes of total time start to finish. Once you have those four things, we're ready to go. Now, before we actually do this process, it is important for me to let you know that you need to back up your data first. There's been tons of times where this has worked flawlessly for a lot of people out there, but there have been some issues, possibly because of super, super old computers or just random issues that for whatever reason, it doesn't work, but it should work for the majority of you out there. So if you don't have your data backed up, you need to at least put it on a flash drive. And again, you can use that link in the description if you need to get a flash drive or create a drive clone or a disk image of your existing Windows 10 computer. This information is strictly educational. I cannot absolutely guarantee that it's gonna work on every single machine that has Windows 10, but for the majority of you, it should work fine. And even if you can't do a drive clone or a disk image, at least make sure that you have your data backed up to a portable drive or a flash drive because you should be backing up anyway, right? So now that we have all that and we're ready to go, the very first thing you need to do is you need to go download the Windows installation file, which is called an ISO file or ISO. And we can download that directly from the Microsoft website. Here's how we do it. What you're gonna to wanna to do is just simply open Google and then in the Google search box, you're gonna type download Windows 11. You should see this link right here from the Microsoft website saying download Windows 11. Just go ahead and click on that then you'll be taken to this page on the Microsoft website. And what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to scroll all the way down to you see download Windows 11 disk image ISO for X64 devices. You're going to select download and then choose Windows 11 multi edition ISO for X64. You click confirm. Microsoft is going to just quickly validate your request. And then at that point you can choose your product language. If you're in the United States, just go ahead and choose English United States. If you're outside of the United States, click English International. So I'm going to go ahead and select that and then click confirm. And then Microsoft's going to give me the blue download button here, 64 bit download. So I'm going to click on that and I'm going to start downloading it. Now I've already downloaded this file, so I'm just going to skip ahead to the next part. This should take 15 to 20 minutes, depending on your internet speed. So while the ISO file is downloading, now what we need to do is go get the Rufus software for free from the internet so that we can run it and create this installer. So you just want to simply go back to Google and in the search box, you want to type download Rufus. The very first link right here, which should point you to rufus.ie, just click on that. And then you will see this Rufus page here with all of its ads all over it. Ignore all that stuff. Just scroll down to this section right here where it actually has the links to download. This right here is an installer version 
for 64-bit systems. This right here is the portable version. Most people would use one of these two. If you have a 32-bit system, you might need to use this one. And if you have an ARM system, like for a tablet or whatever, you might want this one. But the vast majority of people will be fine right here with this Rufus 4.9 Portable Edition. You're going to click on that. And again, you're probably going to get ads. That's fine. Just ignore them. All right, so once that file has completed, just simply click on it to open it. And then just select yes on the user account control. So at this point, what you're going to want to do is plug in your flash drive. And this is going to be the one that you are going to overwrite. And I need to be very clear about this. Whatever is on this flash drive will be wiped. It will be deleted, gone forever. If you have anything important on this drive, get it off this flash drive or use a different one. Please don't create this installation and then get mad at me because you deleted the files. Make sure this is a flash drive that is safe to delete. At this point, go ahead and plug it in. And you'll see a pop-up on the screen here. That's fine, just ignore that. And then you should see here, empty flash drive or whatever the flash drive is labeled. But in this case, it is the eight gigabyte flash drive that you're going to use for the installation. So the file is still downloading and there's a couple of things we need to check first before we continue here. So one of the things that's going to ask you is the partition scheme of your computer. If you have a computer that's probably older than 10, 15 years, you might be on MBR, but we need to check that first. What you can do is right click on your start button and then go to disk management. When this window comes up, you're gonna see this disk zero, which is likely your hard drive that you're on right now. And you can tell that for sure because you'll see the C drive over here. Just go over here right underneath the disk zero information, right click and go to properties. You'll get a window that pops up like this. And then you, you wanna go to volumes, okay? Now in this case, you can see here under partition style, it says GPT, which means we want to use GPT for our partitioning system, okay? So we can close that cancel that. Now we can't really continue here until the ISO is downloaded, but just be aware of that uh, GPT versus MBR. While that is still downloading, another thing we need to check is whether you are on the BIOS or UEFI uh, BIOS type. And most modern systems are going to be UEFI, but here's a way to check that. You can just simply go down here to your search box and in the search box type system and then click on system information right here. And what you're looking for right here is on the right side where it says BIOS mode. If it says UEFI, then that's what you want to use. If it says MBR, that's what you want to use. So now we have those two pieces of information. We are just ready to start the process and wait for the installation to finish. Okay. And it looks like it is done. The file is completely downloaded and we're going to verify here. It is in our downloads folder. There it is right there. Win 11. English 64. So once that ISO is downloaded, you're going to go over here and click on select. That's going to take you to your downloads folder, which should be where your file uh, downloaded to. But if it downloaded somewhere else, just browse to that. And then you're going to just simply select that and then click open. What that's going to do is that's going to load that ISO into the program so that we can create the file from that ISO file. And as you can see here, my system automatically converted over to GPT, but if you need to use MBR, then just select that. I'm going to leave it on GPT and UEFI. And right here, I'm just going to give it a friendly name. I'm just going to call it W11, which is pretty basic, right? And at this point, you have everything you need to create the installer disk. Once again, I want to put it out there. Everything on this flash drive is about to be wiped. If you don't care about it, no big deal. If there's important stuff, back it up first, because once we hit start, that data is gone. So with all the scary disclaimers out of the way, we are ready to proceed. And all you have to do is simply click start and the program is going to pop up this window on you. And this is really the trick. This is really the secret sauce as to how you can upgrade to Windows 11, even if you're unsupported. The first option here is going to be remove requirements for four gig of RAM, secure boot and TPM. This right here is the one that keeps most people from being able to update. We're going to strip that out so that it doesn't affect the installation and everything will go uh, smoothly. The next one here, completely optional, but I prefer local account. I don't like attaching a computer to a Microsoft account. This basically right here forces Windows to create a local account. And I did make a video a while back about the differences and I'll probably make another one. But for now, unless you specifically need a Microsoft account, I would um, leave that checked. Now, in this case, I'm going to create a local account 
with this name. So I'm just going to check this box here. This one here, set regional options to the same value as this user's. Now, you can go ahead and check that whether you're in the United States or outside the country, but you definitely need to check it if you are outside the country because if, for example, you're in the UK or Australia, you want this installer to install the United Kingdom or Australian version of Windows that you're currently using. So uh, I would leave that box checked. Now, of course, you can check disable data collection because who wants Microsoft collecting data on us any more than they already do? And this one here, depending on what version of Windows you have, this is probably one of the most important, is to disable BitLocker automatic device encryption. This really is only applicable if you have a Windows 11 Pro um, edition of Windows because Windows 11 Pro is automatically activated. But even if you have Windows 11 Home Edition, it can still enable uh, device encryption, which could potentially cause a BitLocker screen, which would hide all your data and if you haven't got it safely backed up, you're going to lose it all. So I would definitely turn this off by checking this box. And at this point, all these boxes are checked. And again, I just explained what they are. So check the ones that you think are important to you. If you're not sure, check them all. In this case, ready to go. Click OK. Now, once again, the software is going to tell you all data on this flash drive is going to be wiped. And as you can see, I even named the flash drive Empty Flash, just so I was a thousand percent sure that there's nothing on here I care about. Once you're done and you're ready to go, click OK. And then all you got to do is turn the software loose. You see that green status bar right here. You may get some pop-ups here because it's creating a new partition on that drive. Ignore those. It's fine. And just sit back and wait. Now, what you can do at this point is two different things. If you want to use this to upgrade your existing Windows 10 and keep your files and settings and all of that and not have to lose anything, then you just want to simply click close. But if you want to use this to completely wipe your hard drive, reinstall Windows from scratch, uh, you can restart the computer and boot to this flash drive by selecting it as the first boot device in either your BIOS or one of your keyboard function keys. And then that will boot to this install windows but you will not have the option to keep your settings apps or anything like that so that's what we want to do so we're just going to click close here and then right now nothing happens right but what we can do i'm going to go ahead and close this because we don't need that anymore and now what we can do is click on our little file explorer window here this little manila folder down at the bottom if you go here you'll see under this pc you've got your existing hard drive and here is the Windows 11 installation disk. As you can see here, it's labeled W11, which is what I called it. All you got to do is click on it. And then you're going to see this file right here called Setup. Double click that file and then accept this uh, pop-up window here, the Windows Setup Wrapper. And say yes. And it's going to start the Windows installation here and the prompts and everything that you need. Now, I'm going to uncheck this because... I am not going to do anything to contribute to Microsoft wanting more information about me. So I'm going to click next and it's going to check for updates. Now this could take a few minutes depending on how uh, outdated your system is or whether you have done updates in a while. Most of these are going to be Windows 11 updates that help uh, the installation process. So um, in this case it had to download some updates and now it's going to restart that installation window and then you'll get this it's going to go through and it's going to check your pc but it's not going to do any checking as far as hardware or anything like that it's really just making sure that you have enough storage space on there which obviously if you don't um i do have a video i'll link up here in the top right corner on how to go and clear up space on your hard drive if you choose to update to windows 11. the installation should tell you if you don't have enough space but in the meantime just go ahead and click accept and then it's going to go ahead and download some more updates. This process may take a few minutes. Okay, now if you have a machine that has not met the minimum requirements, you're probably going to see this window right here. And let me read this to you here. Uh, it says the PC does not meet the minimum system requirements for running Windows 11. These requirements help ensure a more reliable, higher, blah, 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 blah. Installing Windows 11 on this PC is not recommended and may result in compatibility issues. If you proceed with installing Windows 11, your PC will no longer be supported and won't be entitled to receive updates. Damages to your PC due to lack of compatibility 
aren't covered under the manufacturer warranty. By selecting accept, you are acknowledging that you read and understand this statement. So what does that mean? Well, one, this is the first time I have seen that specific error message. Usually it just continues and lets you proceed without any problem. And the reason I want to touch on this real quick is because one of the questions I get asked a lot is if I do this Windows 11 update, am I going to continue to receive Windows updates going forward? And for everybody else that has upgraded to Windows 11, they continue to receive updates. Now, that doesn't mean that at some point Microsoft can't turn the spigot off and just say, nope, you're you're done. So just be aware of that. Um, but one thing's for sure, if you stay on Windows 10, you're definitely not going to get any more updates. If you upgrade to Windows 11, even though this Microsoft scare tactic may scare you away from it a little bit, just be aware that you're probably going to continue to get updates. But again, it can be turned off at any time. So with that said, I'm going to go ahead and click accept and say, thank you for letting me know Microsoft, but I'm going to go ahead and accept that anyway. Now this is where it's going to go and make sure your computer has enough space to install Windows 11 because what it's going to do is it's got to install Windows 11 next to Windows 10 because it does give you 10 days to roll back your uh, Windows installation back to Windows 10 so it's not going to overwrite it, it's going to write it next to it. You can always delete the Windows 10 installation files down the road but for now if you have enough space you're going to get this window right here which says here we go, we're ready to install. You're not going to be able to use your PC during installation obviously because it's going to restart multiple times and go ahead and save and close anything that you're working on. Now to recap, you've chosen to install Windows 11 Home. In this case, it's Home for me. It might be Pro for you or whatever version is going to install that same version. And then secondly, this is the most important part right here. Keep personal files and apps. In other words, every program I've installed, every file that's on the computer, all my personal stuff, nothing gets deleted. It's just going to transfer all of that over from the Windows 10 to the Windows 11 when it's all said and done. Now again, I definitely recommend you back up because this may or may not work, but for most people that use it, they have no problems with it. Um, and to answer one of your questions uh, that you might have is that, you know, will my program that worked in Windows 10 work in Windows 11. Yes, they should all work, no problem, unless that program is only designed to work in Windows 10, but for pretty much anything else, it should be fine. At that point, I'm ready to go, so I'm gonna click Install and get this party started. And then you're gonna see this window right here, and this is basically uh, your computer is gonna run some, some background setup stuff and some prep for the installation. It's going to restart the computer, and it's going to start creating that Windows 11 installation that you want. So at this point, you just kind of have to sit back and wait. And after about 30 or 40 minutes, as you can see, I now have Windows 11 on this computer. And as you can also see, the programs that I have installed are still there. The downloads that I installed are still here. Everything is exactly the way it was in Windows 10. And we can go into our settings, go to Windows Update, and check for updates. And let's just see how accurate that information was from Microsoft about whether or not Windows updates would still work. And it looks like the updates are starting to work. So everything appears to be okay. If I go to my About section, Windows 11 Home, now version 24H2. So everything went perfectly. Now if for some reason you do this and you want to go back to Windows 10, all you have to do is go into your settings and type in recovery and then you'll see an option here to go back to Windows 10. If you click that, this one right here is the one that you would click on. Microsoft gives you 10 days to evaluate Windows 11 before it's official that you have it. But anytime in that first 10 days, you can just simply go here and it will just undo everything that just happened and you will go back to Windows 10 and still have lost nothing. And that's it. At this point, you've got Windows 11 and you're good to go. So as you can see, that's as difficult as it gets. Now it is possible that none of the versions that I've shown on my channel work for you. And if that's the case, well, you might be stuck with Windows 10. Well, what does that mean for you? Well, in that case, you might wanna check out this video right here to know whether or not it actually makes sense to stay on Windows 10. As always, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.